Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ark of Painting. For today's episode, I thought we'd slow it down and focus on a guide for how you can paint along with us. Lots of us think about painting, and we tell ourselves that we can't paint. Well, that's not true, and I'd like to show you how to bring out your inner artist, because it's in there, hidden in every one of us. Let's start off with our equipment. First off, we have the cooking pot. Next is the paint base. The paint base is very important for creating strong colors, and they include charcoal, spark powder, and gunpowder. Now that we have our paint bases, it's time to harvest our pigments with our little friend the Parasaur. Our Perry is very kind, he lets me sit on his back all the time to collect a lot of berries. He's much better at it than me. Since we have our pigments ready, we need water as our final ingredient using a few water skins. When you turn on your cooking pot, use thatch so it burns without making excess charcoal. Now add some charcoal, your water skin, and red pigment, and just boil the devil out of it. This will give us red dye. Now let's say we want some green. Mm, that's funky, we made yellow instead. This is because our berry amounts are too high, so we'll either need to look at the recipes using the link below, or we can add two or three water skins at the same time. Now would you look at that, we have yellow and green now. For other types of paint, we're gonna need to use gunpowder instead, such as for our sky blue, or spark powder for our magenta. Now here are the most important pieces of equipment, your paintbrush and your canvas. Once you have a gargantuan amount of dyes, it's time to start painting. Just make sure you're in a safe environment. For our canvas, there are a few tricks you can do with them. First off, there's a feature to drag your painting around however you'd like. But what if you didn't like your picture? Of course, if your version of the game allows you to use those erasing features, go ahead. But for a rejected Microsoft user, you'll either need to plug in a controller, or just click this button right up here. Before we jump into a picture, I got one more trick to show you. Let's say you really like this painting and you wanted to save it. Just click Save Paint, type in a name, and now you can copy the painting and paste it back onto a blank canvas. Now we'll begin our painting tutorial while we run the colors across the screen. Feel free to follow along and pause as needed. Grab some of your cyan, and this is where you can let all your frustrations out. Start making a horizon line with horizontal strokes. I guess you can use whatever brush stroke you want since we're just shading the top half of the canvas. But it's good to get in the habit of that on arc. To create a sort of epitome of Bob Ross's paintings, how about we make a lake reflection on the bottom half? Now this part really helps to use our horizontal brush technique from before. Let's keep the paint thicker as it goes to the sides and maybe there's a nice and bright reflection in the middle. If your reflection is looking a little too sharp, you can use your titanium white or your eraser to even it out. There! Let's make some little clouds in our sky today, and I'm gonna show the simplest way to make some beautiful clouds. Still using our titanium white, we'll go up here and just let that brush start making little swirls in the sky. Thicken up the clouds wherever you feel like some action might happen. Think about where you'd want these clouds to be. There! Now we can start blending this set of clouds. Just lightly tap the canvas, give it a few nice tickles near the bottom of our fluffy clouds. Maybe a few parts are a bit thicker near the top, and there. How about there are a few more clouds up in the sky? Maybe there's a big chunky one right up there. It's all up to you. You can add as many clouds as you desire. There! As our paintings go, there's usually a mountain, so let's learn how to do that. Using our navy blue, let's carve out a big old mountain. Gotta be careful with mountains. These son of a guns will grow on you. And one day when you're making a little peek, you'll wake up and realize you painted the Rocky Mountains. Tell you what, how about we grab our titanium whites and just pull some snow down the side of our peak. Use a diagonal technique to follow our way down the mountain. Just like so. Just like so. Let's keep a little bit of darkness every now and then, and you have to decide which direction you want to take your painting. You have unlimited power. You can do this. It's all about the feeling. There! Now let's make some sky blue on our brush and make an indication of a shadow. Start pulling those shadows in the opposite direction, just like so, and you'll just see this mountain come to life. That's what's so special about this. You have unlimited freedom to do whatever you want. Oh, look at that. Look at that. When you get this technique down, the brush does the work for you. Anybody can do it if they just put a little bit of practice into it. Don't even be afraid to touch up the edges if you like. They're all just happy little accidents. There. Now I've never tried this before, but let's make an indication of maybe a little forest down there, down the mountain. Just let them pop in, wherever you'd like. Now let's have some fun. How about we drop in a big lakeside right back there with our navy blue. Just make all these nice little hills and trees, cause they're loving it out there. Every day they get to see this beautiful mountain. And I hope they sure aren't taking it for granted. 
I bet these same trees could be in your yard for all your life without you ever paying attention to it. Maybe bring the lemonade outside, or a cold drink, and admire the trees in your yard. That's a great way to see how they look, how they work, and especially how every tree needs a friend. There! Now how about we color the ground of the lakeside with our mud color. Just shade it in with whatever hills or shapes that you'd like. Add some highlights to the dirt by dropping in some of our brown coloring. Oh what the heck, how about there's some grass or bushes way back there? When we're pulling down our olive green coloring, remember to keep some of that darkness in the hills. Darkness gives even the simplest things so much more depth. In fact, let's grab this mud color and bring it down a bit more for a big old lake bank. Let's do the same thing we did for the hills, but this time, how about there's a bit of sand covering the shore? Just cover it wherever you feel it fits. It's our own little world up there. Add any finishing touches you'd like, and I think I'd like to add a water line, using our horizontal stroke. There. Maybe there's a tiny little waterfall in the background. Just Just let these strokes flow down. The noises make it easier. And make sure each stroke lines up with the other. Maybe there's an indication of the water churning in the plunge pool. And how about we can see the white water coming in from the side. There! Now maybe there's a big tree smack down right there with our black. So we can focus on learning how to paint our trees. How about this tree was on a creeping hillside and the tree aligned itself over time. Bring your brush way up there and slowly make your way down the tree, getting thicker as we go along. For evergreens, we'll use our horizontal strokes to get the feel of those branches. Some people struggle here with our trees, but you can do it. I know you can. There! It doesn't need to look perfect, just as long as you're having fun. Now let's add the hill. While we're doing this, feel free to already start setting up the shadows for our upcoming bushes. Now how about we highlight our tree with our two brown colors to make an indication of the tree trunk. And now let's add our highlights. Using our olive green, cruise down the tree just like so. Don't kill all the dark areas. The dark is just as important as the light. And there is no light without dark. See, I knew you could do it. There we go. Oh, what the heck, we gotta add some bushes for our tree. Every tree needs a friend, even if it's just the shadows of a few bushes at this point. Grab your olive yet again and try to use circular motions to give it a rounded, bushy feel, while getting darker as you make your way down to the bottom. Maybe these bushes have a variant among them. Squiggle in some tangerine coloring for some of these bushes. Just let the brush take you wherever it goes. Don't fight it. These bushes need some highlights, so let's bring some cantaloupe on top of them. Let's drop in some more green bushes in there. Oh shoot, maybe we'll add a few blue twigs sticking out just to give a bit more funk to it. We're running out of time today, so let's sign our painting. I actually just realized, look at this, you can zoom in. Well, you learn something new every day. Actually, in fact, I think I might touch up a few things here and there. And there! Here we have our finished painting. Using these techniques, I hope you have a fantastic time painting a nice little picture with me. And maybe you'll learn a thing or two along the way. Well anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Happy painting. And God bless my friend. <laughs>